Hello everyone. Welcome to Telugu One Academy. Today we will be learning about the role of media and social networking sites in the case of internal security challenges. Friends, we have already gone through different sessions regarding the role of social media and the social networking sites in the case of internal security. In that, we have seen how social media has been manipulating the cases of internal security. Rather, it may be in the case of uh, the banning of 53 to plus Chinese apps like TikTok and etc. where social media data has been stolen. And it might also be the case of where OTTs, okay, over the top uh, networks have been uh, developing or producing their own production movies which are not restricted in any other way like in the case of film divisions. And we have also seen where social media based news channels have not been following any sort of ethics. Now, to tackle this in tackle this backdrop, the government has framed new IT rules under Information Technology Act 2000. Okay, why exactly we need those rules and what exactly happened during this time of framing these rules and what contains in these rules we will be learning in our today's class. Now you see information technology, intermediary guidelines and digital media ethics. Please note it down. What it says, information technology, intermediary guidelines and digital media ethics. It contains two quotes. One is for digital media ethics and another is for uh, guidelines for the media people. Now when you see this, uh, the new rules broadly deal with the social media and over the top uh, services over the top platforms you can say for example of over the top services are netflix disney plus hotstar and etc now the rules are framed under the it act 2000 under section 87 oblique 2 of the information technology act in a nutshell in a nutshell you can see these are the different uh, provisions which are given in these guidelines Rather, it may be regarding the social media where it has used the terms such as first originator, grievance redressal or grievance officer, where the grievance is redressed in a very prescribed time manner, that is 15 days, where it has also said that digital media should follow the self-regulatory process as in the case of regular media where Press Council of India also imposes the self-regulation process. I hope you all know the, about all these things, okay? Self-regulatory process. It even gave that these OTT platforms, okay, over-the-top platforms need to have their own self-regulation where they certify the movies which are played on their platform in different manner. Now we'll see what are the major provisions in these uh, guidelines. But what exactly had led to these guidelines, my friend? Because of increase in child pornography and uh, increasing use of uh, social media and abuse on social media, especially on women and also misinformation, which is guiding towards mob lynching. For example, we have seen in Maharashtra where a small message of fake news that there are people who are kidnapping the children have led to the death of two innocent people or because of mob lynching. So regarding that, so Supreme Court has observed that this is not good, that there should be a regulation on what people put on the social media. So this, these rules substantially empower the ordinary users of digital platform to seek redressal for their grievances and command accountability in case of infringement of their rights in this direction the following develops uh, developments are noteworthy for example my friends if your personal data or if you are posting a picture in your personal uh, facebook page which is private pa facebook page and your data has been stolen or removed from your personal Facebook page and has been distributed in an open Facebook page, then you might immediately complain to the regional Facebook officer who will 
resolve your grievance within 24 hours. He will, he will just inform you within 24 hours and redressal of grievance should be done within 15 days. So to do all these solutions, it is not just a picture. It might be any sensitive data of yours which might be leaked from these platforms. So as I told you, as Supreme Court in Sumoto writ petition, that was the case of a Prajwal case, White ordered in 2018 had observed that government of India may frame necessary guidelines to eliminate child pornography, rape and gang rape imageries, videos and sites in content hosting the platforms and other applications. We recently have also seen that in Raj Kundra's case that there was a lot of sexual abuse videos which have been posted into the OTT platform what they developed. So similar to those platforms should be restricted in India is the major motto of Supreme Court and it has said that government can do that. The Supreme Court order in 2019 had directed the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology to apprise the timeline with respect to completing this process of framing guidelines. So Supreme Court said now uh, Minister please uh, do the process then let's see how much time will you need to complete this process. Then calling on this and even there were even call motions okay call attention motions in the case of Rajya Sabha you can see on the region or uh, on the purpose of uh, controlling the fake news spreading in the social media. So this is all what was happening at that time. So even ad hoc committee was placed. After studying the alarming issues of pornography, social media and its effect on children and society as a whole and recommended for enabling identification of the first originator that is who was the first person first person to place such videos into the internet was on the discussion and we have even placed such provisions into this now even before placing these guidelines we have been consulting number of organizations rather it may be ngos we have even approached civil societies we have even approached various ministries and it has been spread all over the internet regarding whether these guidelines are enough or any amendments are needed to these guidelines and after due deliberations and talks these guidelines were released and this is the nutshell of how these guidelines were consulted completed or made okay now before going into this class where India is growing and growing day by day with uh, India being the world's largest open internet society India is the world's largest open internet society and government welcomes social media companies to operate in India but my friends, this doesn't mean that these social media companies come to India and do not follow the constitutional mandate of our country. That is, they need to give due respect to the constitution of our country and they need to give due respect to all the value systems what we protect in our country. So regarding that, there were cases where these social media platforms were not in a tandem with the government of India. A simple such case I can explain you is a Twitter versus government of India issue. What is that my friends? Twitter versus government of India. Okay, what happened here? That is where there was a former protest in India, there was a hashtag rotating in the Twitter saying farmer genocide. Then immediately what happened, the government has raised its eyebrows and was saying it's not right to use such a catchphrase that the government is trying to do farmer genocide. And it's true that if you are using such a hashtag, then it might lead for further disturbance in the state internally. So to control that, what government did was they said to Twitter, please block these accounts around, it said around 500 plus accounts to block those accounts which are transmitting this hashtag farm genocide or something. So, the, but the Twitter in replay only blocked 200 plus and it did not give any answer. 
and similar was the case when the center wanted the all the twitter accounts of khalistan movement spreaders okay what is that khalistan movement i have been saying about khalistan in the internal security where we have seen this case uh, in the case of punjab where they wanted to establish a separate punjab nation including the punjab region of pakistan and india there has been a long proxy war now leaving that even in this case also when center government has given 1200 plus accounts the twitter did not comply with the central government now there came an issue there came an issue what is that issue and regarding that we will be learning clearly through these guidelines now however they will have to be accountable to the constitution and laws of india to make them accountable we have framed these rules the first rules what we are going to study today are the guidelines related to the social media to be administered by the ministry of electronics and information technology where it comes to the ott platform that are over the top platforms those platforms are under the ministry of broadcasting but here social media comes under the ministry of uh, electronics and information technology the guidelines first ask for the due diligence to be followed by the intermediaries now you might ask me so what are these intermediaries intermediaries are those companies which provide you platform to involve in the social media that is for example it might be your whatsapp it might be your twitter it might be your youtube all these are called platforms where you are interacting with various other peoples so the rules prescribe due diligence that must be followed by the intermediaries including social media intermediaries in case due diligence is not followed by the intermediary safe harbor provisions will not apply please note this down what is that you need to note down that is safe harbor provisions what are these safe harbor provisions as i told you just before that there was a case where twitter was not in compliance with the central government and it was not blocking the whole list what the central government has given in the case of internal security now if twitter has not followed that diligence then center can say you are not eligible for the safe harbor provision what is this safe harbor provision sir it sounds very catchy but what exactly is this safe harbor provision now let me tell you what exactly is this safe harbor provision what is the protection accorded to the intermediaries under section 79 of it act i did not mention any safe harbor provision here but my friend the section 79 of information technology act is nothing but the safe harbor provision okay let me explain you this safe harbor provision in very very simple manner imagine you are a person a okay if you are intentionally making a quote or intentionally making a post which is going to cause internal disturbance in the state of india now and it that post comes to me and i forward it to another person now here the platform what we are using let it be let it be for say do not take it to heart let it be for say it is a whatsapp now the state government or the central government cannot go and say that it was the whatsapp who has been spreading this uh, word or this content whole along the platform and it should be the whatsapp who should be sued that means whatsapp cannot be sued for the content what you post and what i spread confused let me read it out and you will understand very clearly section 79 says that any intermediary shall not be held any intermediary that is whatsapp or youtube or whatever it is or otherwise liable for any third party information for example i make a youtube video which is very very atrocious or very, which is very very bad for such an community and if that video is on youtube and you can't say it was youtube who should be sued it it would be me who should be sued for that 
So, third party information, data or communication link made available or hosted on this platform. This provision, the act states shall be applicable if the said intermediary does not in any way intimate the transmission of the message in the question, select the receiver of the transmitted message and does not modify any information contained in the transmission. That is, if the intermediary is not tampering with that message or not voluntarily, if it is voluntarily doing it, then you will be arrested. But if it is not voluntarily doing it, then you can't sue the platform. This means that as long as the platform act just as the messenger carrier or the message from point A to B without inferring with its content in any manner, it will be safe for any legal prosecution brought upon due to the message being transmitted. I hope you understood by now what exactly is this safe harboring provision. It was the case same with the Twitter. Then when government said to block around 500 uh, accounts from the Twitter which are uh, continuously posting the tagline hashtag Prime Minister Modi farmer genocide. Then what happened? It only blocked 200. Then it means that it might, it might, I can't say exactly, but it might be understood by the government and the system that Twitter is trying intentionally to spread this message. So that's why we can remove the safe harbor provision, which is under the section 79 of information technology. Please note it down, safe harboring provision. Section 79 of Information Technology Act. Hope you, you are very familiar now with what exactly is safe harboring provision. Now, next is we have even included in these guidelines. Now, we are coming back to the 2021 guidelines. We are never out of that. In this, we also have given redressal mechanism where the rules to seek empower the users by mandating the intermediaries including social media intermediaries to establish grievance redressal mechanism where the grievance okay is resolved within 15 days okay and a reply is expected within 24 day 24 hours that whether your grievance has been accepted or not see 24 hours and resolved with within 15 days of the receipt and even this grievance redressal mechanism, there should be a grievance redressal office, officer within the system whose number has been noted in the website. Ensuring online safety and dignity of users, especially women users. So in these guidelines, they have also said that if any post voluntarily degrades the woman or any other person and the complaint can be filed not just by that person, even some other person, you see, such a complaint can be filed either by the individual or any other person on his or her behalf saying that this picture is not right, please remove this picture or content or video or anything. And that content should be removed disabled access within 24 hours it might be more food fixture because of the deep fake technology what we see today okay because of the deep fake technology what we see today that is easy possibility of morphing the pictures of famous people and making them to be degraded now coming to the guidelines the most important part of this guidelines is that we have divided the social media intermediaries into two categories into two categories of social media intermediaries those categories are based on the number of users that social media is used by okay that social media intermediary how many customers that that does that intermediary have Based on that, we have divided them into social media intermediaries and the second part is significant social media intermediaries. And the central government from time to time notify the number of users which make this a social media intermediary into a significant social media intermediary. What does this mean? By making two categories is nothing but my friends you are making the significant social media intermediaries to have more and more responsibility and to make 
significant social media intermediaries that are nascent or the new social media intermediaries to grow further. To grow further. Let me show you more about this. The distinction is based on the number of users. Government is empowered to notify. The rules require the significant social media intermediaries to follow certain additional diligence. That is, they have to be answerable to the government in certain cases. So the recent rules which were framed by the central government regarding the number of significant social media intermediaries, the number they fixed for, if a social media intermediary has around 50 lakh members, then that is considered as significant social media intermediaries. For example, you create a social media platform today and tomorrow if you have 50 lakh plus customers who are using that, who are using that platform, say it WhatsApp or WeChat or what not it is, if it has 50 lakh customers, then they, ne they need to follow some additional due diligences. What are those additional due diligences? Let's see. Additional due diligences to be followed by significant social media intermediaries. The first one, these social media intermediaries should appoint a chief compliance officer who shall be responsible for ensuring compliance with act and rules. Such person should be a resident in India. Such person should be a resident in India. Appoint a nodal contact person for 22, 24 into 7 Okay, 24 hours into 7 days, coordinate with law enforcement agencies, such a person shall be a resident in India. So you have a person who has complete knowledge about these rules and make the company to follow these rules. And you have a contact person who will be the answerable person if the company is doing wrong and police have come to the company. If they ask a question, why didn't you take action? This person will be the nodal contact person and you will have to appoint a resident grievance redressal officer who will be a resident in India and he will take the compliance of this act by grievance redressal that is answering within 24 hours and redressing the grievance within 15 days. And next, and even these significant social media intermediaries, they need to give their monthly report uh, their monthly compliance report, that is how many grievances they have resolved, how many issues they have faced, how was your interaction and all these you see, mentioning the details of complaint received and action taken on complaints as well as details of contents removed proactively by significant social media intermediaries. That is, even before you are getting a complaint from the government, how many proactive images or provocative images have you removed? from the internet by your proactive nature should be mentioned in this report. Significant social media intermediaries providing services primarily in the nature of messaging that might be like Facebook okay primarily if you say primarily if you say you can simply say WhatsApp okay these days my friend in WhatsApp there are many messages fake messages that there is coming a new virus recently if I say Last two days, there is a new COVID strain in China. It is called Neo, Neo Co. Okay, it is the ninth version or ninth variant. They directly posted that this variant is so deadly. Every two persons, two persons if you, if they get three persons if they get in three, every two person are dying. There is no news like that. Even WHO has said it is a very mild strain and it is only within the animals and no person have been dead because of that strain. But if it might get mutated, it might be dangerous for you. See, such a case, such a messages. Now, if a person is doing such things in anonymous manner, then to find out the person who had generated this message, that is identification of first originator of information. So if we find the first person, with the help of these social media intermediaries, then we can take that person to judiciary and even some other person will now be cautious to make a fake post in a social media. So that is what I said to you. That is required only for the purpose. See, this is very important. This first originator is only required only for the purpose. That is in other cases, they are not needed to provide the information that who was the first person to post this only for the purpose of prevention, detention, 
investigation, prosecution or punishment of offences related to, note it down, these are only related to sovereignty and integrity of India, security of state, friendly relation with foreign states or public order of incitement to an offence relating to EBO in relation with rape, sexually explicit material, child sexual abuse material, punishable with imprisonment not less than 5 years. That is, if you make a personal fake comment within your family and it is not sexually explicit, then that doesn't mean that that person who has posted first need not to be said to the police or the government missionary. It should only and only relate to the sovereignty, security and relations with international sexual contact and etc. So, intermediaries shall not be required to disclose the contents of any message or any other information to the first originator. The significant social media intermediary shall have a physical contact address in India published on its website, mobile app or both. That is, if some social media company has been launching in India, for example, we see Telegram, which has been growing day by day and it has even reached the 50 lakh mark already. Okay, so that is why now Telegram need to have its physical base in India to continue to be a social media intermediary in India. And next, voluntary user verification mechanism. That is, uh, you see in uh, Twitter, you commonly see a blue mark. In Twitter account, you see a blue mark, blue tick. That is, the account is a verified account. Because my friends, we see more number of famous people like heroes, heroines from the movies. They are very, very social media influencers. Imagine that if I create a fake amount, account for Shah Rukh Khan and I place a very derogatory message from Shah Rukh Khan's Twitter account, then it might be easily reached to many of the people and they think whatever Shah Rukh Khan fake account is saying is true. So that is why to verify which account is fake account and which account is the true account of Shah Rukh Khan, we are doing voluntary user verifications. Users who wish to verify their accounts voluntarily shall provide an appropriate mechanism to verify their accounts and provide with demonstrable visible mark of verification. That is, if Shah Rukh Khan's account is virginal, this is Shah Rukh Khan's fake, this is Shah Rukh Khan's original, then it will have a mark a green color tick or something which is very very visible. This one you can easily find out in case of Instagram fake accounts and also Twitter fake accounts. Now giving users an opp opportunity to be heard. In case where a significant social media intermediary removes or disables, if I give a post and some significant social media intermediary has removed that, I can now ask the social media intermediary so why did you remove my post? It was no derogatory, it was nothing. So then I can ask that and they can hear me. Disables access to any information on their own, then the prior intimation for the same shall be commuted to the user who has shared that information with notice explaining the grounds for that reason. That is, the social media intermediaries should say, why did they remove my post from the internet? The users must be provided an adequate and reasonable opportunity to dispute the action taken by the intermediary. So even if the intermediary has mistakenly done or it wantedly want, uh, removed me, then there should be a mechanism for me so that I can ask the intermediary why exactly. I didn't do any wrong, so give me back my post. Removal of unlawful information. Okay. An intermediary upon receiving the actual knowledge in the form of an order by the court or being notified by appropriate government or its agency through authorized officer should not host or publish any information which is prohibited under any law in relation to the interest of sovereignty, integrity, public order, friendly relations with foreign countries, etc. That is whenever there is an unlawful information which is not to be in the internet, then they should immediately remove that. The rules will come into effect uh, so as soon as the gazette has been notified. So the rules are already in play, my friends, by the day you are watching this video. And for the case of significant social media intermediaries, they gave a cooling gap of three months where they need to start uh, 
providing the grievance redressal or in recruiting the grievance officers and everything and they should even show due diligence and compliance with these rules. Now the next part, the next part of these rules is the digital media ethics, digital media ethics, code relating to digital media and OTT platform to be administered by Ministry of Information and Broadcasting. Now as I already said to you, social media has been a very very influencer especially in the case of Facebook launch and having a around a 40 crore customer base any post could be reached very very wide so even in the class where we have learned that social media is a double edged sword okay why it is a double edged sword i have simply said to you that it it has been used by the government to spread the knowledge regarding the different schemes which are launched by the government and also to propagate their ideology. But even in this case, a lot number of uh, fake news, okay, especially yellow journalism, please note such terms, okay. Sensationalization, okay and uh, no compliance of any ethics or guidelines which have been framed no body to look after these ethical code have made the social media even uh, get such cul such information which should not be there in the internet uh, and because of sensationalization and grabbing more and more customer base into their accounts this is not very good for the security of India. And based on this, uh, these guidelines, uh, please note it down. There are two sections you have to note down. This is under the section 87 of Information Technology Act. These rules have been placed. Empower the Ministry of Information Broadcast Broadcasting to implement part 3 of the rules which prescribe the following. That is, Code of Ethics for Online News, OTT Platform and Digital Media. This code of ethics prescribes that the guidelines to be followed by OTT platform and online news and digital media entities. As I told you, a regular media that is either the electronic media which is transmitted to TV channels and the print media have their own press council of India where they have their own ethical code frame for them. Similarly, even these social media Enterprises should have their own ethical code as a whole. Self-classification of content. Each social media, the OTT platform should have their content classified. The OTT platforms call the publishers of the online curative in rules should be self-classified. That is, whether you are playing a movie which is adult movie or it is under, uh, under adult supervision or is it a... Uh, or it is a small people that is children related movie as in the case of film certificate. So based on that you have five categories that the government has given to the date. Five age based categories that is one is universal where everyone can watch. Universal under adult supervision that is U by A for 7 plus okay. And universal under adult supervision that is for 13 plus age. Universal under adult supervision that is 16 plus and next is adult content and these all these certifications or categories should be given in block and they should be very very visible in any OTT platform. Platforms would be required to implement parental lock. This is very very important where in the case a child is holding the parents account then the parent can have a parental lock where they can restrict what child is watching or what child is about to watch classified as you under adult supervision 13a or higher and reliable age verification mechanism for content which is adult the adult content should have a age verification system that is which is only for 18 plus by providing their other card details or whatever which is necessary to verify their official age the publisher of the online curative content shall prominently display the classification rating specific to each content or programs. So everything is here my friends. Whatever I have said I have written in the words also. 
please if you are not following my speed please try to pass the video and look at the slides because each and every slide is very important every content whatever is needed for your exam i have been providing here next as i told you the publishers of news on digital media would be would be required to observe norms of journalistic conduct of press council of india please note it down what are the norms these be these uh, digital media should follow that is the norms of press council of india and the program code under program code under cable television networks regulation act that is for electronic and print media both regulations they need to follow thereby providing level playing field between offline print tv and digital media a three level grievance redressal mechanism has been established under the rules with different levels of self regulation that is first level self regulation by publisher second level self regulation by self regulating bodies that is press council of india in this case and uh, oversight mechanism where it looks if these are not followed and these are also not followed then they will be brought into this mechanism that is we are creating a statutory body in which uh, in which the supreme court judge will be leading a panel as in the case of press council of india self regulatory by publishers as i told you the publishers shall appoint a grievance redressal officer based in india who shall be responsible for the redressal of grievances received by it the officer shall take decision every grievance by it within 15 days everything here the grievance should be resolved in 15 days my friends next self regulatory body there may be a self regulatory body one or more there can be one regulatory body or more regulatory bodies for publishers such a body shall be headed who will be heading that self regulatory body my friends retired judge of supreme court a high court independent eminent person and have not more than six members there should be a high court judge or a eminent person there should be a supreme court retired judge who will be heading this panel and whole six members should be there in this panel to see whether the social media is following the due diligence they have promised that they will be self regulatory such a body will have to be registered with the minister of information and broadcasting this body will oversee and adhere by the publisher to the code of ethics and address grievance not to be resolved by the publishers within 15 days okay that is whenever the complaint comes sir you you publisher you social media account fellow you have made me wrong you have made me defamed please remove whatever the content you have placed then i will feel that if that social media person is not removing the derogatory uh, information regarding me in 15 days then i will reach this self regulatory body and say so and so social media platform has not removed the content regarding me which is completely wrong and fake please order them to remove that then this body headed by supreme court judge retired will say the social media person that you need to remove that content because there is no true valuation in this next uh, oversight mechanism as i told you minister of information and broadcasting will have oversight mechanism that will look after each and every body okay shall formulate and oversight mechanism it shall publish the charter and self regulating bodies including code of practices it shall establish an interdepartmental committee for hearing grievances that is it is a last body even if the second level body has not given its due diligence we will reach to the minister of information and broadcasting body now my friends we here come to the end of this class so i hope you have understood each and every part what i had explained here so please try to read the lesson again and try to answer more and more questions So friends thank you for watching our video this is Nikhil from Telugu One Academy thank you